Right now we're lucky enough to be exploring Anchor Island and there has been heaps of predator control that's gone on here. So you can really see the difference compared to where we were on the mainland the other day, Sam. Absolutely. If you look at all this understory here, on the mainland it was just mud. Deer had created tracks everywhere. They'd eaten out all the palatable species. And then, as well, the rats had eaten all the seeds so no seedlings could come away. But out here on Anchor Island, there's no rats, there's no deer, there's no possums, there's no stoats. The bird life's going insane. There's so many birds around here. And as you can see, the forest canopy is really dense. So the deer haven't browsed out all the adult trees. The rats haven't eaten all the tasty little fruit and the seeds. So that's allowed the seedlings to come away. And those trees create food for our bird species. And you can see lots of different species, a high level of biodiversity, which must support a whole lot of different birds. So everything's pretty much connected, I guess. Absolutely, for sure. There's a whole, especially here on Anchor Island, you know, it's the home of kākāpō, the big fat green parrot, it's the home of kākāriki, the little skinny green parrot, it's the home of kāka, the big parrot that goes through the canopy and just wrecks everything. You know, we've got kiwi out here, we've got tiaki out here, we've got moho, we've got pretty much every species that should be found here, here on this island. As it should be, and I guess with all this life, it's a good example of a healthy ecosystem. But once upon a time there were moa here, and they would have browsed. So how did our native plants cope with that? Absolutely. So any, any, any ecosystem we've got in New Zealand is a contemporary ecosystem. That means it's an ecosystem of now. Yep. We can't really think about the species that have been made extinct. Like the moor, any species that's been made extinct, we can't get them back. So the moor would have come through here and played a, a similar role to deer, and they would have browsed all the palatable species, and, and there would have been a browse line. Uh, right. in the canopy, you know. Yeah. We don't see that today because more are gone out of this landscape, whether they're here on these islands or not, probably just on the mainland. But uh, out, on these, uh, out on these islands, may not have seen that same level of browse, but where there were more present, they would have eaten a whole ton of foliage. And there were some plants that adapted to cope with that browsing, like we looked at the lancewood the other day, the two different forms that it has. Absolutely, this here. This, this guy here is called oh, yes. a ho horowika. Yep. And if you look at the horowika, his leaves are pretty incredible. They're really hard, they're really durable. There's something more and deer don't want to eat, right? And so the limiting factor for this guy is he, he decided, I'm not gonna get eaten by the moor. I'm gonna create really tough, really strong leaves that, doesn't, that don't taste good. And the sad thing about that though, is that they're really terrible at photosynthesizing. Right. So they can't turn sunshine into energy very well because they have to be so tough and strong. So the Hortoweka, he grows really slowly and he grows and he grows and he grows. It might take him 10, 15 years. He gets up above more browse height. And once he hits more browse height, he turns into what we call a Hortoweka, which is different to Hortoweka. It's the only tree I know of that has two different names for its age. So the, the hohoeka, it spits out all of these soft palatable leaves that would be delicious for oh, more, eh? But okay. what it does there is uh, they're really good at photosynthesizing. So it turns uh, the sunlight into lots of energy and it grows really fast. So it goes slow, 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 above more brow sight and then boom, is a big tree. Yeah. That is an awesome story. And it, it really shows how things are connected with each other. And if we change one thing, we can pretty much change everything without realizing. And it's been cool to see all the predator control and the birds coming back. Mm. And I hear that on some islands, the birds are doing so well that they're, they're competing against each other. What happens when, when there's not enough space for all these wonderful birds? Absolutely. So a lot of these islands out here are so full of birds and they're doing so well that they outcompete each other for space. So if we don't take those extra birds, all those juvenile birds off the islands and reintroduce them to new places, uh, they're just gonna die. There's not enough food in this ecosystem. So it doesn't matter whether, it doesn't matter what we do, we, we really still need to use these islands as a biobank 
to take the young birds and the overpopulation, all the surplus, and take them to new islands, introduce them to new places. And what we need people at home to do is prepare the land. We need you to trap at home. We need you to look after your area, your piece of the jigsaw puzzle that is New Zealand, so that we can bring birds from here and introduce them into your backyards. That is a really good challenge and something to think about. It's not just about these wee islands, it's about trying to make the whole of Aotearoa predator free and we can all help with that, can't we Sam? Absolutely. A little bit of trapping, a little bit of time in the bush and we'll get there pretty quick I reckon. Sounds great. Thanks Sam. Thanks for having me.